Every manufacturer seemed to have key success with certain models, and for Carver, the 28-foot Riviera certainly did well during its production run in the 1980s. It's a compact and relatively affordable family cruiser that has a unique two-stateroom layout. In fact, I remember these models being so popular that it wouldn't be uncommon to see a small flotilla of them moored together in the marinas. Today, we're going to go check out this 1986 model. Built on a solid fiberglass hull, this unique model features an open air center cockpit. The wraparound windshield offers great visibility, and the large side windows offer great cross ventilation. The canvas top can also be easily removed for the ultimate in versatility, and it can be done so in two separate sections. The port side of the cockpit features a functional cockpit table, which can be converted to a small yet functional berth when not in use. A handy movable backrest allows four to seat around the table, and when flipped to the aft position, a large passenger seat up forward is revealed. Just ahead of the passenger seat is a large storage locker that doubles as a dry bar, and below the raised seat you'll find plenty of additional storage for large items such as fenders and safety gear. Off to starboard, the helm area features a functional dash with ample room to flush and surface mount electronics. The helm seat is quite large and below it you'll even find more storage space. The forward cabin of the Riviera is quite spacious and offers ample amount of headroom throughout. The galley to starboard features an under counter refrigerator, built in overhead toaster oven, an alcohol electric stove and ample counter and storage space. To port, there is a roomy head compartment, again with ample headroom and a comfortable amount of space. A large U-shaped dinette encompasses the forward part of the main cabin, and the high-low table converts this area into a very spacious berth. Additional sleeping accommodation can be found in the aft cabin, which features its own private entrance from the aft area of the cockpit. There you'll find a single berth to starboard and a double berth to port. Also featured is a large storage locker between the beds, complete with mirrored doors and a vanity sink. Now one thing I do like about this boat is the fact that it's powered by a pair of direct drive inboards, which is actually quite unique for a boat of this size. The wide placement of the props, in conjunction with a relatively wide beam of 11 feet 1 inches, allows a relatively nimble handling around the dock. Now granted you won't get the same top end performance as you would out of a comparable boat with inboard outboard power, but after all, this boat is designed and does very well as a comfortable little cruiser. During the sea trial, we climbed on plane in 4.1 seconds, and the ample power cruised us comfortably along at 18.3 miles per hour at 3,400 RPM. At wide open throttle, we hit a top speed of 29.4 miles per hour at 4,600 RPM. Despite the fact that while at the helm, you're literally standing right on top of the engines, the sound levels were respectable 87 decibels. Now, despite the challenges of boarding this boat, which in my opinion can relatively easily be overcome, Carver Riviera offers great value for the money. Now for a family that's looking to get into boating, or for somebody who wants to entertain and enjoy the comfort of two separate staterooms, you should certainly consider the Carver Riviera.